My name is LaSalle Silva and I'm passionate about New Zealand's rare breed horses. I'm going to meet John Burrell and Lee Thornton. They're breeders of Tennessee walking horses and run Sherwood Tennessee walking horses and gated mules. They're in the middle of moving from Auckland to beautiful Hanmer Springs and have invited me to come for a ride. Part of their herd is still up north, but there's a selection of pure and part bred horses to choose from today. Also present is their mule. He's a mammoth donkey and Clydesdale horse hybrid, and he is here representing the mule side of their ranch name today. I'll be riding Glamour, a 20 year old purebred mare. There are rumours that the Murphy family of Talaga Bay imported a Tennessee walking horse in 1906, though some say it was an American saddlebred. If this is true, perhaps there's a chance that that horse is the ancestor of some of the gated mixed breed horses in New Zealand. Silverstone Stud and Taupo imported to Tennessee in the early 2000s, forming the basis of the breed here in New Zealand. Come with me as I discover the wonder of the Tennessee walking horse and the story of Sherwood Ranch where I ask John where he first heard of Tennessee walking horses. Uh, I might be 10 years ago. A mate of mine had a half cross and um, was using it as his shepherd mount. And I just had a bush pony, which was great. I could do anything I wanted with him. But it was just hard gated and I, I've had so many broken vertebrae and neck and other bits and bobs over the years. I just, after a weekend riding, I'd be knackered for a couple of weeks. And he said to me, he said, oh, you want to get one of these, these Tennessees? So I'll get on, ride them all weekend, get off fresh as a daisy. So he put me onto the guy that bred his one. And I sent a really kind mare that I had down to that stallion in that Memphis, the bu other buckskin. That's the, that's the outcome. So she was born. But I was like, okay, I've got a foal now, but I'm still four years from having a horse. And in the meantime, I'm a bit OCD, so I'd sort of found Tennessees all over the country that had come from the stud in Taupo, the original stud in Taupo. And I found Cisco, and he was down in Wellington and being schooled as an English riding horse, but that's not what they are. And the girl that was doing the schooling was a bit out of her debt. And she said, oh, I was for sale, um, but he's not very good. So I'm an art about buying him and I didn't and then we met this one that you're on at a gated field day and we both grow there. I'd actually learned about here a bit earlier and I would missed out on buying this one by about an hour. And um, so I got to the lady that did buy her and said, you know, if you ever want to sell her on on your guy, just make sure I get you got my number. Well in the end I took a punt and bought Cisco side unseen and had him float it up. And he'd only been broken in six months, so I got him, and he got floated up on Majestic, and arrived, and he was, you know, a young horse sort of thing. And um, I said to Lee, I said, well, if I'm going to ride him, now's the time to ride him, the moment he gets off the truck, because he's as knackered as he's ever going to be. And we don't know him. I got on him, and he just stepped straight out, and just about went right out from under me. And um, anyway, he's been great ever since. And then I no sooner got him going, I got a late night phone call from the woman that I had glamour, saying, oh, if you want her, she's yours. This is the money. Um, I need the money in, I need the money in the next 24 hours. And she needs to be moved within the next week because she's due to fall in three weeks' time. So I ended up with sort of two in quick succession. Cisco was so good. Glamour foal. By that stage, I thought I had the best bred mare in New Zealand. I really should breed a, another foal. And I've learnt where the original stallion had gone. So I acquired him. And really it's just gone a bit silly from there to be honest. We've ended up with his sister and we ended up with, ended up with two or three other mares, imported mares. And um, yeah, now we've sort of got a whole bunch of them. But we're great to have around. And my mate was 100% right. You know, you can sit on these, you can sit on these for nine or ten hours and get off and you're fresh as a daisy. Well, we go on these big trips, and like Lisa, we'd start at the back, and wouldn't very long we'd be at the front. 
one would always end up coming home like well ahead of the field. Our horses would be untapped, covered, served in the paddock, and the rest of the field would start arriving. And it used to, it makes me laugh because they'd come in and they'd basically fall off their horses to get off them and then grovel around with their hands on their knees going, oh, wasn't that a great ride? And they're like, this. oh, what a marvellous ride! And they're hobbling around, crawling. I'm looking at them going, if I ever got a horse looking like that, I wouldn't get back on the bugger ever again. I'd never ride again. And then they come over and look at us and they go, huh, how long have you been back? You don't look sore. Did you not do the whole ride? Uh, well, actually, yeah, we did the whole ride and we did all the difficult options. Why aren't you sore? Uh, we ride soft gated horses, not hard gated bone clangers like you. Well, oh, can I have a ride? You give them a ride, next thing you know, you sold a horse. Then they come back three months later and say, we've got a, y a youngster, we want a youngster as well to bring on to later on. So just about everybody who sold a horse to he's bought two. The thing is, he's, he's such a great horse. And he's a made horse now. So to put him on the back burner as a spear is not really ideal, you know. He's better off, because he's done everything. I've shot off him, I've roped off him. I did, oh, yeah, we've tricked, we've swam rivers, we've, you name it, we've done it. Um, Boulder hop and got stuck out on a West Coast beach and had to get over a big rock fall that had fallen down. The only way, to, oh, only way around it was over it. So I had to teach him to get up on a boulder with me in the, between the boulders and then get him to step from boulder to boulder. And, and the boulders were all covered in muscle spat as well, so they're all as sharp as sharp. And he had to step and he had to go from one, we had to go from across four different big boulders. And he just listened and put his foot where I top, showed him where I wanted him and put his foot and he put it there and look at me and, oh, okay. And then he'd get his next one and then he'd be stretched out like this with the feet back there and over there and then I'd have to tell him, tap, bring this one forward. And anyway, we got, we got over it. But we had a lot of halves and three quarters, which just is great, just a bit more fun to the main. The, the halves, the halves and the three quarters are, are a little bit more gutsy. Like mockers, mockers only have three quarter, and Hallow is a lot more gutsy of horse. You know, purebred Tennessees are actually good plantation horses. Yeah, well they were bred to zoom around billiard table flat plantations, mm -hmm. whipping slaves. It's, that's the truth. It? That's what they were there. That's what they were bred for. Um, they're not designed to be hill climbing, broken country horses. They're not built like that. In saying that, they develop into it, like Cisco has. And Striders. Yeah, Striders, he, Striders develop, as they develop into it. Stronger the more you go along. Um, whereas if you cross them with a good Kiwi breed horse, and a strong Kiwi breed horse like Mokoras, all of a sudden you've got got the brain and the sensibility of the Tennessee and they want to please and then you've got the guts of a good Kiwi hill horse all in one pretty you know and, Stamina, right? and, and like Mocha the, the bigger the day mm. the stronger he goes so the strider further into the day where all the rest of the horses are pattering out he's still going still getting getting up you know he's still actually getting stronger and stronger. And he comes home stronger at the end of the day than he, than he starts it, really. Wow. Like it was a really long day, and then we got down the road to St. James, and they were powering. Yeah. Absolutely powering. And they both pulled the front shoe off, yeah. and um, and on the gravel, and they're still powering. And was like, the whole mission statement right from day one, mm -hmm. I didn't intend to be a Tennessee breeder. Yeah. I didn't intend to be a Tennessee All I set out to do was breed absolute ultimate bush wheelchair for me. Ultimate mount for me do the stuff that I do. Yeah, custom bred for John. Yeah. Yeah. And and the Tennessees at the time appeared to be the ultimate answer for what I wanted. It's sort of horse you can leave in the paddock and just oh, jump yeah, on. Yeah. 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 their natures are just exceptional. Yeah. Like we say, the people you break them in at two and just let them grow because they take a while to mature and they're quite sensitive. Apparently very easy to break in. <laughs> we do all the work, send them off to the experts. So we do all the groundwork there. Babies are tied under tarps and we do all that sort of stuff, leave them under windy days. 
the, you know, all the ropes around the legs so they don't panic. Um, then they go off to get started. Sensibility training. Yeah. Like Jericho, the Palomino Stadium, he went off and had the guy said, he said he's got like seven legs and he's smooth and he said, just no trouble at all. We do step out quite boldly and get a little unnerving for the uninitiated. Gated horses do though, yeah. and my horses like that as well. What have you got? Uh, Pasifina and they're, they're pretty similar. The Tennessee walking horse is popular in the United States, but in New Zealand we only have about 30. Tennessees use a stepping pace, in which the legs on the same side move at the same time. But unlike the hard pace of the standard bread, the Tennessee walker places their back hoof slightly before the front, removing the moment of suspension that hard gated horses feature. Who ride, it is a gentle side to side motion. So while the point of view camera looks quite active in the stepping pace, my seat was glued to the saddle. Glamour is and feels taller to ride than a Pasifino, and her gates are loose and swinging. Mocha feels taller again, somehow more like a horse, and he was even smoother. Mocha's canter was delicate and peaceful to ride, a nice easy to sit lope. Cisco felt different again. His walk pushed my hips forward and back a lot more, lots of swing. All three were a testament to the breed and offered a fantastic insight into what Tennessee walking horses have to offer. They are such a wonderful breed, I hope you all have the chance to try one one day.